The big news on social media, in newspapers, and around every water cooler in America this morning is the four-game suspension handed down to Patriots quarterback Tom Brady as a result of his role in deflating footballs. So what is Mr. Giselle Bunchen supposed to do now? Here with the answer is Loeb and Loeb attorney Brian Sokolow and the journal's Jason Gay. Thank you for joining us, Brian and Jason. Thank you. Thank so, you. so, Brian, uh, Tom Brady, through his agent, says he's going to appeal. Do you think an appeal could be successful? I don't think so. I think there's a lot of evidence in the Wells report to, su to support the penalties that were granted. I think when Roger Goodell looks at that, he's going to be able to say there was intent, there was the motive, and there was the evidence based on all the text messages, based on non-cooperation, based on a lot of very good evidence, compelling evidence in there. I don't think it's going to be successful. I think there's ample ground to say not only are these penalties sufficient and appropriate, he could have done more, but he's willing to stick with these penalties. And we're going to bring in Jason now for a second. So we have the, the obvious, uh, you know, take on this legally, what it's supposed to be, but ultimately we're fans. We were about a heart. A lot of us were crying last night. What do you think that people are thinking about uh, from Boston to San Francisco on this? Well, I think the mood in Boston is quite a bit different than the mood is in New England. In New England, I think people are stunned. Uh, Tom Brady is somebody who has as, uh, you know, frankly, as unblemished a public reputation as anyone has ever had in Boston sports history. And for him to now be subject to basically a cheater brand is kind of stunning for anybody who has followed this team, followed this athlete through four Super Bowl titles. I think New England shocked. And then, you know, one of the suspension in this, it's going to be four games, which is through the uh, first five weeks of the football season. He'll come back week six against the Colts, who are the team that uh, pushed him in. Brian, I'll ask you a question. You know, a lot of the chatter this morning was, was this suspension about what he did or what he said to investigators and how he wasn't maybe as cooperative as the league would like him to be? It was about both things. First of all, it's what he did. There's the evidence with the text messages that he knew what was going on that he either directed or implied to these employees what they should do. But beyond that, it was very clear from reading the report and from reading the, the letter and the, the statement by the NFL on the suspension, he didn't fully cooperate. Tom Brady didn't turn over his text messages, came up with some reason not to do that. And I think the NFL looked at that very poorly and said, that's a big reason why we're going to impose significant penalties. And Jason, you mentioned yeah. that Tom Brady has one of the most embell or, uh, you know, clean records in New England. Someone who doesn't, uh, though we all believe in in Bill we trust, is, is Mr. Belichick. What do you think his role is? I, I haven't seen as much of the vitriol that was directed towards Tom directed at the hoodie. Do you think that that may change in the coming days? Well, if you look into the fine print of what the NFL's decision was yesterday and their written decision, quite clearly the Patriots' past history, and by that they mean Spygate in 2007 when the Patriots were caught Ill illegal videotaping signals, opponent signals, that factored into this. Past history did factor into this. And so you can even draw the conclusion that Tom Brady, in a degree, is paying a little bit of the penalty for past history, which, of course, is directly responsible, directly the responsibility of Bill Belichick. But can I just ask a quick question of our uh, attorney here, which is the NFL has kind of a rough uh, last couple of years, or particularly last year, with regard to some of its big decisions being overturned by arbitrators who were brought in after the fact. Ray Rice's suspension, which was indefinite, was overturned. He's a free agent now. Same thing with Adrian Peterson, a year-long suspension overturned around the second time after the appeal. Do you see any possibility of the NFL maybe overstepping its bounds once more and having the same kind of reversal? No, I don't. I think they're not going to get reversed here because there is this clear and compelling evidence in the report that the NFL based its decision on. But I think you're right. In those cases, I think you can say the year-long suspensions did come constitute an overreaction. But here, there wasn't a year-long suspension. We're talking about four games. We're talking about a million dollars. It's a lot of money, but it's not $10 million or $50 million. But it is the largest financial fine in the league's history. Yeah, right? but look at the Patriots. How much money did they make? How much money did they make just by winning that AFC championship game where, where these, the, the, the deflated balls were at issue? They made far more than a million dollars. To the Patriots and to the Kraft family, 
yeah, it's a million dollars. It's not a lot of money. So I don't think that's significant. So I don't think well, this is a tremendous overreaction by the NFL. It's not like it's a year-long suspension of Tom Brady. Maybe there'd be a discussion there, but at four games, I just don't see this as being too much. And what is, you know, Jason, we got to ask, it's four games. What are the Patriots going to do? I know Jimmy Garoppolo may be the handsomest man in New England, <laughs> but is he enough to, I guess they'll be just fine. Well, there was some irony because late last September when the Patriots were off to a rough start and got creamed by the Kansas City Chiefs, there was a conversation actually happening in New England whether the Jimmy era should begin and Tom Brady might be at the end of his rope. That obviously changed in the midst of a Super Bowl championship season. But, you know, where all these things are going to be answered, and of course, football always wins. You mentioned the fact that it's a four-game suspension. Brady returns, if he keeps the four-game suspension, he returns October 18th. Indianapolis Colts in Indianapolis, the team that actually kicked off this whole thing, the New England Patriots will face. You can only imagine spectacular ratings for a vengeance game such as that. You know, it's just football just can't lose, at least with regard to the television ratings. Well, we can't lose here at the News Hub. Before we let Brian go, we have one last question from a tweet we saw this morning, or I guess last night. So let me get this straight. Brady's punishment is twice as long as Ray Weiss's and twice as costly as Bounty Gate. Do you still think that this seems like the appropriate response? I do think it seems like the appropriate response, but you know, maybe the NFL needs something like you have in criminal law and courts. They have sentencing guidelines so that you know we're going in. Yeah. Not that it's the same thing. If you commit a crime, if you commit this crime and you have this history, you're going to get this penalty. The NFL doesn't quite have that. Maybe they're moving toward that. Maybe they need to do that so everybody gets some certainty and knows what the penalty is going to be. Fascinating. Brian, that's probably the smartest thing I've heard in the last 24 hours. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And Jason, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah.